Yeah. All right. Uh, hello, I I'm Richard Min, and I'm joined with Yuen Fun. Um, Yuen Fun, uh, how are you? And tell me about yourself. Oh, I'm great. So, hey, Sol. <laughs> I'm Yuen. I'm the co-founder and president uh, of a of Spin, uh, a micro mobility company currently based in San Francisco. So we've been, uh, we were the first company to introduce um, stationless micromobility to the United States. We launched bicycles and now run a large network of scooters in close to 40 uh, different American markets. We were acquired by Ford Motor Company in uh, November of last year, and we are now the uh, it's mobility unit. Uh, so it's been, a, it's been a crazy two years since we started the company, and uh, a lot of fun times and a lot of rides and a huge amount of impact that we've seen our product make in the U.S. And uh, I think scooters are pretty new to, I see a few around here, yes. not that many, but uh, not, not as much as in L.A. and other cities. Just a little bit. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Seoul is still a very car-centric uh, yeah. city. Um, and um, it, it's bought out. Correct. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah. We, uh, I guess we are still the probably the only scooter company that's been acquired. Yeah. Um, so it, it was a culmination of a many year journey for me uh, mm. from my first startup in 2010 at, uh, uh, that was funded by Y Combinator. Um, that, that was, I guess it was ho-hum. <laughs> you know, we, we had to, uh, I kept learning along the way. I, I started several other projects. I, I launched my own venture fund mm -hmm. uh, in 2016, and that's when I first discovered the concept of stationless uh, micro mobility mm -hmm. in the form of, um, of a bike share in, in China. Actually, I was oh. out in China uh, Interesting. raising you capital for a venture fund. Raising capital for a venture fund, and you discovered. Um, spin? That's correct, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think I ever told you the story. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how I didn't know it. That's how Spin started. So in 2016, okay. uh, I was spending a significant amount of time in Beijing and Shanghai um, mm -hmm. while closing up uh, my initial set of investors, which I did. Uh, and that gave me, while just uh, hanging out at my apartment, I, I came across these yellow, orange, silver bicycles that made my commute to Starbucks extremely convenient. Okay. And I kind of thought to myself, this was a really neat idea. I didn't know that um, how the American market would respond to bicycles, but we kind of took a chance on it anyway. So uh, in March of 2017, uh, me and my co-founders, Derek and Z, we um, bought 300 orange bicycles and launched them at South by Southwest okay. in, that, in, in Austin, and it was a resounding success. Mm -hmm. And it's been uh, it was it's it's been a sprint ever since. We launched at the same time. Um, Line came on the scene uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, we both launched bike share programs officially with Seattle in that fall, and then soon after that, Bird launched with scooters as well. And the the industry okay. kept uh, um, basically kept ripping off each other. It's continually improving with mm -hmm. the different. I mean, the idea I would say had to start with um, really the genesis of the idea was. was probably credit OFO with, with starting the stationless mo uh, mobility. Okay. This was, I think they started um, with bicycles on college campuses in China. Yeah. Then uh, they bought the cities, Mobike came along. We brought the model to the US, and then Bird came along and, and uh, introduced uh, scooters, electric scooters, and we also did the same as, as the industry evolved. Ultimately, we don't see ourselves as a bicycle or a scooter company, we're a mobility company. Okay. Uh, we care about getting you from one place to another cheaply, safely, reliably, and whatever vehicle gets you gets it done the best. Um, so, what is the connection uh, uh, in Ford? And yeah, bicycle. No. Scooters. Why? Why? Yeah. Why scooters? Yeah. Why bicycles? Uh, um, well, Ford is itself at its core a mobility company, mm -hmm. uh, and and. Um, Henry Ford introduced the Model T, mm -hmm. um, and that solved the problem of affordability. I mean, when they rolled out the first mass manufactured cars, what it gave people was mobility at an, at an affordable price. So they, they took a, what previously was a, a low volume um, luxury good that only a few could afford. They mm -hmm. made it in mass quantities, and now they brought the price of cars down and allowed individual ownership of cars and masses, okay. and this happened in the, throughout the 1900s, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, now we, we take mobility for granted because we can buy a car for 20, 30K, relatively you know, affordable. Um, and I think there's a, there's a quite, I think there's a, 
uh, it was a TED talk that um, uh, Bill Ford um, recorded a, a maybe sometime in the last few years or so, where he yeah. he talked about the the evolution of the company and, and how they needed to change as our uh, consumer needs have, have been changing in you know with how we're all moving the cities and how the problems are changing. Mm -hmm. So today's problem with mobility is not simply about getting more cars, it's actually that there's too many cars on the road in, mm -hmm. in cities. And yeah. so there needs to be another mobility solution. So that's where micro mobility comes into play. Um, mm -hmm. We There needs to be, a, while the traditional sedan and SUV form factor works really well for highways and suburbs, it's not the, it's not the right, uh, it's not the most efficient format for, for dense cities. And so that's why bicycles and scooters represent a really interesting solution. And uh, in fact, I think that um, Bill Ford himself was inspired you know, to, to start the chain events that led to our acquisition because he saw scooters on the road in, in Detroit and he saw the impact um, and how it was actually solving um, some, some problems that his colleagues faced in getting around from one part to another. And you could be stuck in traffic or you could just hop on a scooter and be there in, in a few minutes. So it, it's the future of the mobility market, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, well, it's, uh, it's one segment. It, the mobility, I guess the mobility industry is always kind of expanding, right? And, and different solutions needed to be brought up at different times. So with today's congestion, micro-mobility is, is turning out to be a really popular, and it's, it's clearly resonated with our users. Yeah. So what's been driving all this is not um, uh, has been the, the tremendously fast adoption by our users. We, you know, ever since we started the company, we've basically done very little marketing. Yeah. Uh, our our product is yeah. just enjoyed product market fit from from day zero. Yeah. Um, the first three hundred bikes we rolled out were used up, and then we saw rides on them, and, and we haven't really looked back since. And uh, Silicon Valley or, or uh, San Francisco, and you gone to a city, city mm -hmm. or um, um, expansion is planned or something? Um, yeah, so we're based in San Francisco, but yeah. we operate in close to I think it's 40 markets right now, including oh. DC, including um, Detroit mm -hmm. uh, and LA, and a whole smattering of cities and campuses mm -hmm. uh, throughout the US. So Spin's unique value proposition, different from Bird and Lime, mm -hmm. is that we've always been partnership first, and partnership only, actually, and in working with cities and, okay. and campuses, uh, and that made our um, that really aligned ourselves with with Ford and their approach to working with cities. Uh, we don't take the Uber S model of launching first and then you know, dealing with the ramific uh, ramifications of that. We've always uh, sought to work with cities to get. We basically rolled out the first permit system in Seattle. <laughs> okay. um, we, well, while some startups might might view this as a hindrance, you know, how to deal regulation, we saw it as a as opportunity, okay. and we realized that in American markets, we would get a, a you know, a, it would be tremendously advantageous for us to always work with, develop a great reputation for being able to work with cities, um, and so we crafted this permit framework that's now being replicated through the U.S. and cities, um, that basically uh, gives. Each individual company that applies uh, a, a limited number of scooter you know, slots, literally, and um, that's that's been kind of widely successful in managing how these companies have operated. So you avoid the, you know, some folks have seen the uh, the bike pileups in China. We don't see that in the U.S. because each company is is, um, is is kind of capped at a certain amount. So why scooters and not bikes or? Some trikes or something. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that was consumer driven, and, and that's a, a scooters is, is probably not the end of the story as well. Okay. Uh, we're continuing to evolve the form factor. Um, we it's really an iterative approach. Mm -hmm. We when we rolled out our first scooters, we saw much more adoption of the product, yeah. and um, it wasn't uh, so so. I mean, we actually didn't go through an extensive testing period or anything like that. We rolled out the product and we, we let the market dictate and we clearly saw uh, a, a much more demand for the product. I could guess why. I mean, our guess is, is that um, scooters offer a much more convenient, fast... Mm, okay. um, that's convenience. It's, it's stepping in and yeah. on and off a product as opposed to, you know, adjusting the seat oh, and okay. having to um, 
pedal, you know, to exert yeah. force, and yeah. it's fun, and it's uh, it's also it's a very lightweight experience. Mm -hmm. It's almost as easy as stepping on um, like an escalator. You, know, you don't really think about the trouble of, of you know hopping on and off. You know, when parking, it's really easy. Um, you're not bruising yourself because it's falling on you, uh, and uh, it, it just takes up very little room on on a sidewalk and kind of looks neat as well. <laughs> I, I think that's actually a, not a bad, um, not a trivial point actually. I think the, the, the initial Segway products, if you remember the old Segways that were forward facing, um, made the user seem a little clunky. So, so I think that uh, having a, a form factor that more, was more in line with the skateboard, very, very American, you know, very, um, very, very relatable, uh, was, was really important. So, um, uh, expansion is plans. You going to go abroad or just uh, mm. in the U.S. and see what happens or something? So we're expanding as fast as we can, really. Uh, so, so right now we're focused on the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. The scooter, um, I guess, industry as a whole is growing nationally. There are companies, local companies, mm -hmm. starting in. Even in Seoul, I see a couple. Yes, um, uh, in uh, Latin America. Yeah. Um, in in Asia, in in Europe, yeah. uh, Europe's a particularly great market, we believe, given that it's uh, it's always been very people friendly. That the cities were made, were, were created, and laid out before cars, so um, they're very pedestrian and bike friendly. So I think that's you know the, there's definitely a chance for us to look at that in uh, I guess the next year or so. Um, but ultimately, I think we're we're still really focused on. Um, Scaling our company and team—it's been—it's uh, been a really crazy ride for us. And, I mean, the company is two years old, I believe. So, yeah. So we've been we've come a long way just for a nice from an company. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but uh, uh, you you mentioned Seoul, mm -hmm. and um, Seoul has got scooters. Would you make a play for Seoul, or just uh, just not? We're always open to, to different opportunities. I think it's about the, um, whether it's a partnership with a local company, um, whether it's doing it ourselves. I think uh, the first hurdle would be getting clarity on, on the regulatory environment. We, mm -hmm. as, as, with, as we do in the US, we definitely want to make sure that um, we, we work with a partner with the city over campus first um, and establish that, that regulation. And um, I'll have to check back in on the current. I haven't been, these things move very quickly mm -hmm. and internationally. Um, and I'm not exactly sure of what the, the status is, but you know, if, if there was an opportunity, we'll, we'll definitely look at it. I hear some, I think Japan has been thinking about as well as Singapore, um, and uh, I think that uh, the product is very relevant in any market. Yeah. Uh, mobility is very universal, um, just like needing a cell phone. You know, the need to communicate, the need yeah. to move is very basic, or need to eat is a very basic human need, and, and I don't think that's any different. It might be, have different characteristics, you know, different, different depending on um, the cities, you know, the, the income you know, level of the cities and whether that our, our particular model is sustainable, but some version yeah, of yeah, mobility yeah. is needed in every city. So mobility over scooters, what is next up for you for mobility, um, not scooters? We're actually focusing. So one of our efforts is a bit on infrastructures. So wow. we're quite we're quite uh, we're quite happy with the form factor as as of today. And we definitely are. I mean, give take, take advantage of Ford's um, resources in terms of vehicle development. Okay. And clearly, they have a, a long, uh, but that's a longer term thing. We'll talk maybe over the mm -hmm. next few years, uh, we'll continue to roll out. Um, so far, like no, people are not buying the scooters. So you know they're they're renting the scooters, meaning they don't need they don't need necessarily to have like air conditioning on them or like features like speakers or like Bose speakers. You know? <laughs> yeah. They might be fun, but ultimately you're only using it for 15, 20 minutes. Okay. You know, do you care about what you know? To a certain level, it it, it matters, but um, people ultimately want the convenience, a cheap ride, and durability. Um, I, I believe ra over rather any specific features in 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 the in the hardware itself. We just want to build this a safe, durable, and and, uh, and really easy to use scooters. But at the same time, we're investing uh, 
quite a lot of energy into building on infrastructure, and we've rolled out these things called uh, docking stations. Docking, docking stations. stations. So these are oh, charging okay. stations. Think oh, okay. about um, like think about the gas stations. Mm -hmm. You know, they, we need to charge. Uh, so each and every scooter we deploy needs to be charged um, mainly every every over every night. So right. that's that's quite a lot of work for our team, and, and we had, we've assembled a great group of operations crew on the ground. But that's a lot of um, work, and obviously, if we we roll out a, a hybrid system where we allow users to park in um, these these stations, um, they can charge themselves overnight, and we would save quite a bit of costs that way. So we've rolled out three of them: one in Ann Arbor, one in Tampa, and one in DC. And these are stations where a user can um, can leave leave a scooter and. Very soon, we'll also introduce some like incentives, such as a, a, a rebate for, for returning one, just like a shopping cart. So you, you know, you'll get a, get a, a bit of a credit for, for uh, helping us out. And um, it, it's um, testing now, or just you're testing now, or just uh, you're rolling out the, it in stages. We've got first three uh, already installed and on the ground. One okay. at a hotel, I believe, um, and we're. we're Going to be pushing over this quarter to, to roll out more of these uh, in our markets, and just based on mm -hmm. as with anything we do, it's, it's kind of uh, we roll it out. If, if users like it, we <laughs> continue to um, continue to scale. Interesting. Um, so that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think this all all this happened since the last time I saw you. Yeah, yeah. which is quite a what 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 Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm uh, I was. Writing your blog and it's uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's the friend blog mm -hmm. and then I heard you bought out and I was shocked and uh, uh, and here you are yeah <laughs> and um, it, it's really good um, startups are um, one when we hit product market fit and you put in the work and you built up the um, my, I, I, it might be different for, for different people and, yeah. and different companies. Yeah. Uh, in, in my case, I think I benefited from building up uh, network knowledge and learning from previous mm -hmm. uh, efforts throughout. I mean, it's while loss in itself was only what it was it maybe a year and a half in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, amazing. Uh, required. Uh, it's it's really the culmination of the work that I've put in since 2009 yeah. to 2010. I mean, uh, a lot of different adventures. Yeah. Um, you know, doing YC. Yeah. When YC was 20 companies or so. Yeah. Uh, making um, because our initial um, in the initial investors for Spin was a group of YC alumni, oh, just okay. my friends. So they were very instrumental in helping me out. Uh, recruited the initial team from. A bunch of YC companies, <laughs> so and uh, and I actually got a got a head start because I already was running a fund, <laughs> and that 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 uh, that really helped. Uh, and and you know, having fun gave me the, the right financial connections to to get that initial uh, capital to get it off the ground. So that was and and given that it was a um, it was it was a bit of a race to mm. us, between us and other companies. All that advantage. Very, it was super helpful. And um, uh, why, why, why see with the advantage, but you did it yourself, right? Um, yeah, I think that we had, um, we were, at some point, I think we were planning on, on you know, going through YC again. Mm -hmm. um, I think timing for us just didn't, didn't work out because of the, the, how, how fast we scaled. Yeah, okay. So we, we started the company around I think we started talking about the company in Christmas 2016. We started started the company around January, and uh, we had raised the Series A by March. Okay. So I think we're in time, timing didn't quite work out for for the like the formal YC program. But we, I think we would have benefited, and it would uh, seem like a good idea to to the, the YC program is always helpful. Um, it's got a group of great peers, and um, I'm still pretty active in. in uh, uh, in the community and, and uh, draw from the resources and, and help out companies on the way, yeah. uh, invest in cool startups. He is a mentor at uh, Great um, Startup Soul. <laughs> awesome. <yeah. laughs> and and uh, it's really good for you to come here. Um, 
one final question. Okay. What would you do to impact the world? Hmm. Are you talking about big problem that yes, I think yes, would yes. need to be problem. solved? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Not sure if this is a. Uh, uh, what is your life goal? It's a great question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> other than solving, you know, problems. I mean, Spin started because I wanted to solve uh, a problem that a lot of other people had as well, yeah. which was just getting around from one place to another. It seems very simple. At the same time, it, it's so frustrating. Yeah. You, know, uh, you literally can't move, right? Like you. That that's a that's a very um, big issue. Big issue, I think, for me. Um, interesting as well. I mean, you, you're clearly going to have a perspective this, and I will develop a better perspective this when I actually have time to. to <laughs> but I think that you know, health is is is, a, is, yeah. a, is the next thing that I'm as health. much as I deal with tech. Yeah. I think um, you know uh, I, that my my thinking was probably going to start drifting towards that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, and what can we do to improve our own quality of lives, mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps you know, augment it in some way? You know, can we um, can we extend our own lives and cure uh, cure different ailments that come along our, our way? So I haven't developed a, a clear thesis on what exactly, but I'm, I'm I'm if I had to guess, I'd probably be leaning towards that direction once I you know can stop worrying about. You know, I think that at different times in my lives, we care about different problems. Yeah. Um, you know, two, three years ago, my top problem was getting to the Starbucks quicker. Right? <laughs> like that's, <laughs> that's the, I think in, in, in five, 10 years, I'm gonna have a different set of you know, priorities in life. Yeah. Starting a family and then things like that would, would probably change my, uh, mm -hmm. my, my perspective a bit. That's amazing, but uh, uh, I'm done with my interview and it's really, Good to see you, and good to see yeah. Impact. Uh, no, it's been doing well. Yeah, it's yeah. good to see you, man. Yeah. Um, so that is my uh, final question, and uh, and if you want to do the career thing, you know who to call. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, bye. Bye.